What's up everybody, once again it's Brand Man Sean and we're here with the first of a new interview series called Brand or Die where we talk about people who have impactful brands, help been a part of building impactful brands and have interesting insight on branding in and of itself. So first and foremost, I gotta reintroduce you because it's not his first time on the, on the Brand Man channel to Keith Dorsey. What's up, man? Man, appreciate it, appreciate it. Everything's good. Hey man, like you have, you have managed, what well, at this point you said about 20 influencers, yeah. connected with you know 40 plus influencers, of course, the Robbie Worlds, Lit Twins, and now you've even moved into management you have in a very social world, right? A very social media landscape. You have one of those unique perspectives where we hear so much on the front end from, I want to be an influencer, I want to be an yeah. artist, but you're one of those guys behind the scenes that have been able to help get an impact from not just the views, but make money about right. that, man. Right. And obviously you're needed because so many people don't know how to make that connection. So I'm interested to hear first and foremost, what, what made you get into it knowing that all right robbie world was a, a, a friend of yours but mm -hmm. what made you truly pursue it and, and say i see this as a true business well um i guess the budgets got the promos got bigger and more started to come uh, okay. and it was it got it came it started to be more just like a little oh can you shout me out type of thing like brands started to reach out real okay real and nice. what really shifted like everybody knows my story see my other videos of how like robbie world is my best friend and how he began to blow up on vine and the rest is history but like it really started to hit when i got my first budget um from atlantic records the biggest bucket from a budget from atlantic records okay. and we actually met um uh, Jordan and Justin over at, um, we, I met them at um, Rolling Loud in Miami. <laughs> That's why I will forever go to every Rolling Loud in Miami for the rest of my life. <laughs> because we met them there and then we got a big budget for Shula Mafia. And I was like, wow. And they said, how much is it going to cost for the main ones? And I sent them this, this budget that was at this time a big budget and they approved it. And I was like, wow. This is for real. <laughs> you know, this is for real. Say, so, y'all, we need to tighten up and we need to really start doing more of this and start. And, and, and then it's like, that's, it's a business now. Yeah. You know, a few promos that come to their DM for like smaller music artists that just want to put the song in the skit. But that really hit all at once. I was like, I can continue to do this all, all over and over again. And I was just, just what I thought for myself, but they actually needed it. Gotcha. Like I had one email, um, one of my influencers, you know, they creators, artists, they, they don't like to do certain things. They don't like to check their email. So I just went and emailed, said, let's go through this email and see what we get. And it was a contact from Journeys. Uh, oh, one of Journeys the, the shoe store? Journeys, yeah. Okay. Um, one of my influencers that work with Brandon Got Fans. Um, and I responded to the lady and they said, yeah, we want to get him out to, uh, I think it's, they flew him out to Philadelphia. Really nice check. Mm -hmm. uh, with other creators and he was in the winter um 2017 i believe um campaign for okay. journeys he was on all the banners and all the stores all the magazines that they sent out uh, all over the united states wow. and that was a big deal and i was like man we have to go higher we have to go bigger when it comes to this okay and before i get into next next question i want to say it's not me i mean it's not you it's me Okay, uh, can you project a little bit just for the mics okay sakes? absolutely i don't yeah. know i want to make sure they're good in the post okay. production for sure but your, all right, you, you mentioned something that was extremely um, important to me. Mm -hmm. You said this isn't just like posting, paying for promo. There's a real business. How do you know that it's that transition? Or can anybody who's already getting a certain amount of, hey, can you pay for my um, for a shout out type thing? Can those people just transition into a business? How do you make that transition happen? Um, well, I truly believe that anybody can do it. It's how you go about it. Okay. Like you can get a promo and it's like, oh, I just throw it up. But let's really sit and, and think about how I can make this promo very creative and how I can get put my thought into it mm -hmm. and how you handle like, oh, yeah, let's just do just send me the money on Cash App. No, you got to send you an invoice. 
you know. So it's just how you handle the situation. How you yeah, how you carry yourself. Because okay. you can always just throw something up. And, then, and then when you handle it that way, and you look at it as a real business, even like just not with the promo, just overall as being a creator is a business because there's so many opportunities that can come if your portfolio, like your Instagram, like your social media platforms, those are portfolios. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at it that way, you'll start to attract the bigger, the bigger things. Mm. Okay, so you have to take the quality in mind. You have to start building the portfolio and then handle those back end systems like invoice and things like that, right. just so you can can look legit to exactly. those, you know, that other side of business. Right. Wants to see that. Okay. Even for myself to add this in, I like for a while and it worked. You know, I was using a Gmail, but now I got a business okay. that's in like it's influencers at KeithDorsey.com, and mm -hmm. I realized like a lot of these bigger agencies won't even accept emails from a gmail account or respond <laughs> and now since i have my business email they, everything's looked like okay these people are running the business and right. it makes me as a manager to when i'm trying to negotiate things for them it makes me look professional like we know mm. what we're doing okay yeah got you so that's the that small stuff is it's very small real, even real important it could be a a, a deck a, 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 a media kit all that it just it changes everything okay. <laughs> i think that's important to hear because at that point right people who already have a certain level of business things like that like getting your own email it's not that expensive right but when you're coming from a mentality of i'm just trying to make money and i'm trying to save money at the same time you really want to know is that really worth it because i'm yeah. still getting emails right. but that stuff <laughs> like that too it really is a yeah. thing huh Okay. <laughs> I mean, that even makes me think about some of the emails that I use on certain parts of yep. this. Where I... <laughs> so what, for you especially, right, what's, well, actually you can kind of touched on this, but it brings me back to the idea of the brand for the fans, mm -hmm. right? And the consumer side of things and the brand in terms of dealing with business, the professional brand, right? How different are each of those things? How what's the polish look like on each side? Um, well, it's it is a it's a big difference. Um, now, I always learn by um, trial and error. Mm. Like yeah. when I first started to submit to labels, like I used to like <laughs> just send the links, copy and paste. But then they would come back. They, these people didn't know. And shout out to uh, Max at three hundred ENT when I first actually started to do this, they would respond and say, could you put it together in like a PDF for me? <laughs> so I had to polish it up and say, actually create a, a deck that had all their pictures. I spent like hours on this thing, uh, on publisher on, on, on my Mac and put their analytics together, put this together and put their best in And not just that, but not doing pictures they took on their phone, but professional photos, headshots, mm. you know, taking the Getty image photos that they've gotten uh, over the um, over the past year and putting those things in there and polishing it up. It, it changed. It just it makes the presentation like everything's about presentation. Right. You know, even when we come into a when I bring them to certain places like it, the presentation of how you walk into the room and how you guys work together. Even if when it comes on, a, on, on going on a plane, because people realize that. Wait, what, what does that mean? What does that look like? Cause I, I like the fact that, I mean, it shows that you actually, you know, you do this, right? Because you have such small details yeah. that you think about and notice. What does that mean, how we walk into a room? Well, it's, I make them look like the stars that they are. So mm -hmm. when we come in, we're just not doing anything. It looks like, okay, they're on a mission. They're, they're, they're booked to be here. You know, they're already famous. People know them, right. but it's how we move about. Like I make sure that we're all together and we're, if there's different activations in the room, I'll make sure that they're, they're doing the activations. They're taking the pictures. I'll see who the photographers are. I'll, even when it comes to music, see who the DJs are and get it, it, people who just watch different things. And how I know, because I get feedback. Even when it comes to as small as, it became like sub, subliminal now, because on the plane, we travel together, like right. we always travel together. And I had this, it was kind of weird, but there was this girl that sat next to me on the plane and like the day, next day, I got a DM for her. I was like, who is this? She was like, oh, she sent this long message. I don't know who you guys are, but I saw how you 
work with with your with your group and how much how you took uh, care of them, how you made sure that they had their seats first, how you made sure that it was just that small. I was like, uh, wow, it was creepy crazy. at first, but I was like. How did she find my Instagram? That's what I'm trying to you figure know? out. <laughs> but that happens all the time. And people see, they see me not necessarily demanding them to do things, but it's how I'm working with them. Like mm. pulling them to this, like I, I'll do this all the time. Like this is what we're going to do. I prep them before it. This is what we're going to do. You're going to walk into the room. There's going to be interviews. There's a red carpet. This is how you do your red carpet. Because a lot of them is their first time doing this stuff. Mm. It's new for them. Like I had two, two girls that I worked with, with, their mom, Famous Ocean and Kung Fu. Uh, they have a hit song called um, Savage Out, called uh, Active, Get Active. And we were able to get activated through Fresh Empire for the BT um, Hip Hop Awards in Atlanta. They booked them to come there and they walked to Red Carpet. They had never done anything like that before on that scale. Mm. So I say, hey, this is what y'all want to do when you're doing interviews. You need to make sure that you're listening. So it's like a development okay. in a way, you gotcha. know, and people really kind of noticed that. Dope, dope. So... I want to switch gears a little bit because obviously there's all that that goes into management. But when we get into the things that people see on the front end that people get so curious about influencers from and that's these platforms from an artist standpoint, from an influencer standpoint, where how do you look at Instagram first and foremost? Because we hear everybody knows there. Most people are on there. But then you hear people like Gary Vee saying Instagram is going down. And then we start talking about other platforms. How do you look at Instagram and what's the actual impact you've seen it have, have on your business and moves? Well, Instagram is definitely a household name. It's mm -hmm. just like wake up in the morning, it's, in, it's just automatically in that thing. Like, you want to go brush your teeth. You want to check your Instagram. Yeah. That's how it yeah. is. Yeah. Pretty much. I try you not know. to, but it happens. <laughs> you on Instagram, it used to be tech, your tech messages, Facebook and Instagram. You know? But the thing is, um, it's been big for us. Uh, it's it has its own ups and downs, like the algorithm, you know. But if you study it mm. and you create, make it a business, and you make it a lifestyle, and you keep up with it, then you'll you'll go with the flow. Just like when the things, oh, we're removing views and likes. Everybody else going crazy. My team, we're studying it. When mm. we look at it, we're like, well, it's going to be like story. What's going to hurt our brand? No, it won't. Because guess what? You still get story promos and all the companies want to do is see the analytics now. You know, it's nothing's going to change. So we're, we have to be on top of it. You have to study it. You got to be ahead of the curve. Um, because it, it's, it's in it for me for business. Like I, I make sure it also helps me connect with other creators, too. Like I easily can connect so easily. Like I have so many DMs, especially from artists now who want to work with me. I, have, I build relationships with other micro uh, uh, influencers and also artists who are small, but they have really good potential. Mm -hmm. So I don't, if I don't necessarily work with them, like I keep the relationship, I give them um, some tips and ideas. This is what you need to do. I'm looking at your page, you know, so I'll do some free consult, you know, but it helps me to connect, help me to actually stay relevant okay. as well. And for me, knowing what's going on. Gotcha. Like, it's my business to go down the timeline and see what's going on, see what's going viral, so I can filter that back to my group and to my life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it also helps me with, with business, because when other companies hit me up and say, hey, you want to do this campaign? All right, this thing is going viral, so let's use this when, you, when it's time to create to help blow whatever product or brand that they have. Do you think there will be any point where it starts to fall in terms of almost like a, a bubble, right? We know influencers become more and more expensive on, on a platform like Instagram over time as they start to learn the game. They were super underpriced, now they learn, <laughs> you know, then they start to charge more as they get bigger, more money comes in. But then when Instagram starts to mess with its algorithm, and of course, if you're like you, right, y'all are learning it, which like anybody should be doing that, artist or whoever. If you're serious about it, you should take that approach. But just a general macro perspective of it is let's go with other platforms. So do you think the price that y'all or, or a lot of influencers will have to charge will go down or, or what? Uh, I think it's very competitive now. Okay. Because um, especially with a lot of the labels, like they, some of them are like tight budgets. Mm -hmm. But my group, I tell them to adjust okay. to who it is. 
like we like Warner um, contacted us through um, TIG. Uh, you think it's a game through uh, Lucci's uh, label, yeah. and uh, for uh, an artist named Posa. Okay. And they told me that okay, we only have a thousand. Like we have more, of course, but we want to start with a thousand because I want to test it out. Mm -hmm. So I said, usually roughly. A lot of the bigger ones, they only got like maybe three hundred dollars for the post, and usually they no less than seven hundred, seven fifty to a thousand to twenty five hundred. But I said, you know, just work with me. They're gonna test it out. They're gonna come back with more. They did, and guess what they did? They came back with more. So my group knows how to adjust and not just oh, if it's not five thousand for the post, I'm not doing it. You know, mm. depending on who it is. You know, now if it's somebody that's like small and like then of course they have to just kind of wait but they even if they are small they still work with them and they sometimes they they'll just do it because they like the song you know or they like the product but um it it, it just like I hate it because there are some influencers who are just like a-holes and they just won't do anything if it's not like you don't have to do that you never know what's going to happen. You right. never know this person can blow up and then they're big artists and then now you're like, dang, I missed out on an opportunity. I could have just posted it for them. Like, you're going to make content anyway. Right. So just take the money, you know. I know you're not going to undermine yourself like, oh, $50 for it. No. Nah. You know, but sometimes you just have to kind of work with people because it is, it is super competitive. There's a lot of influencers that are, um, that are getting paid and they are figuring it out. So my group, while we create long term, like we've been working with these labels and these brands for years because they know how to adjust when it comes to price. Mm. So that makes a, a huge difference. I'm, I'm hearing because I definitely like doing influencer marketing and things like that. I've, I've definitely ran into people and, or been working on something for an artist and seen them hit a certain number or, or, or the people say, hey, you got this. And if you don't have that for that budget. They don't even respond right. or like, nah, this is it. This is it. And, you know, some people will do like test campaigns and things like that. But what you said made me really think about is the fact that that long term relationship over time. Yeah. Is, of course, like you said, you can't do it with everybody, because even when people reach out to me for certain um, for certain things, you can't do it with everybody. You know, DMs get flooded. You got to still take care of yourself yeah. and what's going right. on. But. You never know what's going to happen with somebody, you know, and, and where they're going to be. And also, you never know what you're going to need. Sometimes you'll have a tighter budget. Sometimes you'll have a greater budget for you as a manager. Is, you, is that kind of one of your did you feel like you ever had to train influencers to think that way? Yes. Or, OK, because I, I, they don't know. Like okay. a lot of them just blow up out of nowhere. They have no business skill. They will not respond to stuff. They'll just do things very sloppy. Like a lot of my time, I'm like really arguing. Because <laughs> they're, especially the younger ones, they don't know, but I mean well, and they know that. And I'm, I'm, we'll be going at it consistently, but it's, and then we'll get to this later. But like a lot of them, they're like my brothers and sisters. So it's like we have a relationship, so I can do that. Like I'm like, what y'all doing? Like I had some few creators over here, they released a song, but they sitting here dancing to another song. I said, what the heck y'all in here doing? Y'all release a song, y'all ain't even made not one trill on your own song. You what that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, get to it. Like, so it's just like I stay on them and I de it's like a development. Like you have artist development, that's influencer development. And that's something mm. that we focus on too. Cause I never thought about it that way. Even, influencer development. Exactly. Even yeah. when it comes to creating the content, like make sure that you create it. Like, cause like they'll do a lot of things and they'll just put it up and then the people will come back and they're like sometimes three or four times and they didn't like it. I was like, well, put effort into it. Don't just, just because even if it's, I don't care if it's, even if it's 300, if your $300 project should look just the same as your 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 $10,000 project. I always give quality no matter what it is because people, it, it's about your image, you know? Right, it's still it's you at the image. end. They, didn't, they can't even decipher. They don't know, oh, he got paid 10K for this exactly. one. Exactly. It's like, oh, that was trash. That was nice. Keep yeah. it consistent. Yeah. and. Like one influencer, he posted something. And I said, he, they always, so some of them, they have to send for approval. And I said, you know, you know you didn't want to do that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you're right. You're right. I'm going to redo it. I'm like, come on, just do it right the first time and get it out of the way. Yeah. Because they, they, a lot of them, they're so spoiled right. that they say, oh, even when it comes to YouTube videos, like, oh, it's just look like a job time. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> you don't do nothing. You get up from your room. Now, I would say it is work. Right, right, right. But you rather go work at Taco Bell or you would wake up out of your bed, create a dope video, and post it and get paid to your PayPal, Cash App, or whatever, or wire transfer. Right. And you move on about your day. Mm. You make a decision. Okay. Got you. So, as you found success personally, how... How, how have you changed, right, in, in your approach to the game and how you see the industry as you start to work more and more within music? Because you, what were you doing before music? Um, way before this, I was, I started as a, like, network marketer. Okay. Like, I sold, like, all the super juices, all the weight loss stuff. Oh, like so I you really, already had some of them. I had that skills, skill. So right? that, okay. that's the basis. In my last interview I did, that was, that's the basis of my life. I did that since I was 18 for like 10 years. Oh, wow. So, so all the, the personal development, like, I mean, I've done so well. I got BMWs from companies. Like I built, oh, one of those. so you actually got the, yeah, to, to I was, real. You know, they always yeah. throw that with people like, oh, this is not gonna actually be, you actually got the BMW. <laughs> right. And I was able to qualify several people on my team. That's what's up. So that's where the, the personal development came to be able to work with people and to be able to uh, cross-cultural, mm. um, uh, communication because right, right, right. the companies were so big we would go like it's so many different international in, in, um, uh, different um, nationalities are part of the company like I had to learn like oh these people are from Japan these people are from here so I had to learn to be able to communicate mm. so that's where the communication came from when, that's what's up. yeah uh, that's, I mean that's straight up transferable then I, yeah. I can see that already then yeah. how, how have you adjusted as just a, a business person in general have you thought, hey, there's this greater level that you want to do within music? Like, is there still, or entertainment, is there a higher ceiling that you have there? Or are you trying to immediately start to flip into outside of other industries? Um, well, I have other things going on, which helps me focus on what I really love. Like, I have an Airbnb business, like in different real estate um, things. So I have other stuff that's operational, and I still receive residuals from companies that I've done with network marketing. Uh, but when it comes to um, influencers and the music, like my goal, like I'm shifting into the next level of things I'm learning. Like at A3C, I was really learning. Like I'm learning from these. I have several mentors in the industry that I look up to, like, you know, QC, like Coach K and P. I really look up to them and I have several other um, um, ones that I am super close to, like uh, Footy over, he owns uh, NEA. Um, Never Eat Alone Studios. They have artists, um, 24 Heavy, Cash Talk, and Mari. Okay. So little they know they mentor me because they, <laughs> I listen. Right, right. When they're talking, I'm really listening. And that's the thing is I don't know nothing about music. It, uh, I'm really listening. Even um, Boo, um, Akon's brother, right, right, yeah. like um, he works with the, the girls that I work with as well. Okay. And like I'm really learning. I'm really listening. Like I'm quiet. Like I'm not. I'm not. I don't know nothing about music. I'm not going to act like I do. So they're actually mentoring me, and they don't really know it. So it helps me to go to the next level, and I ask questions. Even um, um, even working with um, Jason over at um, Streamcut. Okay. Like I'm literally learning, <laughs> and I like and they, they don't know that when I ask a question, I'm listening, you know, and I, I'm going to apply that. So it helps polish me because I am going higher. Like my goal for 2020 is to get at least three of them signed uh, to a deal. Um, three of the artists, influencers. A lot of every one that I work with are influencers. They just starting to do. Do music now, some and it, music. yeah, some, some of them do music, and it's, they're really talented. And they're really okay. streams are going like Famous Ocean Kung Fu. Like their song Savage has over a million streams on Apple Music and like 900k on Spotify. Like they release this stuff, and then one of their videos has four million views on um, music videos, four million views on YouTube. So when they release stuff; it's good, and they put the same quality of work in as like these bigger artists. And, and how the industry is, a lot of the artists, big artists, are trying to do the social media, trying to get the social media up, but they already got it. So a lot of labels are signing them just because of that. And they're getting bigger deals and the best deals. That makes sense because they bring their value. Yeah. So for me, what changed me, like I'm shifting from just, oh, just doing this to creating um, uh, a solid management company in a solid label mm. to where the ones who are managing 
I'll be able to shift them to um, the label and getting, you know, how all those different layers of things work. Right. However that works, I'm still learning. <laughs> It's going to happen, trust me, because a lot of them are already being contacted by, uh, and I'm facilitating a lot of uh, a lot of the label stuff when it comes to that. That's what's up. So I, I want to ask you about a business for philosophy, because it sounds like it's what you're doing or how you think, right? Primarily, you work within the influencer mm -hmm. um, market with translating that into music, mm -hmm. right? And it sounds like that's the business that takes most of your day-to-day -day attention. Yes. Right? And, but then you mentioned other things you're doing, Airbnb business, um, the residual income from um, network marketing and maybe any other thing. It sounds like you have put energy into other things, mm -hmm. but the other thing where you put your money elsewhere, it doesn't require your attention. Is that correct? Right. So it's like uh, you always want to have unlimited like streams of income, right. multiple streams of income. So I, for the first part of my life, I focus on one thing. And then guess what? It begins to become a base. And every now and then I'll just kind of like go in and do small things to kind of keep it going. Um, the Airbnb business, like I, it's just automatic for me. Like it's really easy to do as long as I make sure that I'm managing it. But this is like my main focus because things go up and down. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, even when it comes to the influencers, um, there's different phases of different markets. Like sometimes it's high market, like, like first of the year, spring, summer, summer, like booming. And then like okay. right now it's kind of like it's like it's not super slow it's it's like not as much because they reach out to me you got any promos no i'm working on them nobody's especially when the, how the music industry flows like when it comes to the end of the year nobody's really kind of dropping campaigns because they want to wait to the first of the year to do their run mm -hmm. so i'll make sure that like my businesses are because once one business here the other business can hear and keep you going you know and then in the best world all I'm doing well, <laughs> but then you'll be all over the place, but then you have to put people in place to kind of run different things. So right, right, right. like for my Airbnb business, I have cleaners that I can hire to come in here and do all these things, you know? Gotcha. So yeah, it is a, it's super important to make sure you have all that, but that helps me focus on, cause I'm super passionate about uh, the management business and the mm -hmm. social media influencer management and artists, because like everyone I work with there, I, I'm, I've been knowing them for like, five years, four or five years, and because Rambi has, I've been knowing the longest, but I'm, it's a passion when it comes to it. Like, I really want to see them win, because mm -hmm. they're connecting me, that's like somebody who I just met. Now, like some people, some people actually go out to find people to manage, like, oh, let me go here, I'm gonna manage this person. No, they all came to me, or, uh, or we all knew each other, and we figured this thing out. Let's, right. how do we make this work, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it becomes, it's a different approach a different passion and it hits different when you your family with who you're working with right when it happens yeah. like that yeah so you it's almost like building from a lifestyle standpoint yes. and philosophy it's like i've built my life so i can focus on the areas that i'm most passionate about yep and fortunately the area that you're passionate about is also good business yep <laughs> exactly okay all right so what do you we, we've we've talked about these uh, these platforms and obviously you know TikTok and Triller, we had that conversation. Okay. Which one, do you have a favorite one on one over the other? And then if so, why? In terms of just your personal use, not necessarily saying the other platform is bad. Um, When it comes to like, I just started to really use, I like TikTok because you can really get kind of creative. Mm. Triller, I like because it's for the, it's like more like for the culture. Like a lot of the artists are using um, Triller Right. And not just to be biased, but like the Triller fam messes with us. Like they, <laughs> if we work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I, li I kind of like Triller because they took us to the office there and we, they, you know, told us about, you know, and it's simple. I like because the platform is very simple and anybody can use it. Even like um, an older person can use it. And I think that's yeah. why a lot of the artists, even a lot of the, the vet veteran artists are jumping on. And they could just use it. Oh, click this, you get the song, boom. Unlike TikTok, is like all these different things. You got to put on all these. It's just, <laughs> it's crazy. You yeah. really have to learn it. But once you learn it, yeah. you'll, you'll do it. So, I, I mean, I, I would go with Trilla first because it's, it's a lot simple and it's, it's like more for the culture um, and more really for what we do. You know, I work with a lot of the dancers, you know, okay. when it comes right, to right, right. Um, social media. And um, it's the way to go, but they're jumping on TikTok now and they're getting a million 
uh, followers in like a month and going to one of them created as soon as she created she was at 10,000 followers in an hour really yeah I mean did she like announce it to people or she just posted she just started time? posting and announced it once on her story yeah and boom it just started to explode crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> well TikTok is, is the next wave I, I, I like it because it, it really can take you to that next level of content but don't ignore it because there's really results there. oh yeah yeah. Each one is, is different. It's going to do something different, I okay. believe. Got you. So, all right. What about YouTube? Also, I, I gotta ask. About oh, that, YouTube. I know doing the YouTube. Yeah, movie. definitely YouTube. You like <laughs> YouTube will change your life, and it's totally. It's like nine day though, oh, because like yeah. I, I didn't see this come out. Say, what's up? <laughs> I deal. It's nine day because I deal with a lot of these real life YouTubers and real life Instagrammers, mm -hmm. and sometimes the YouTubers look down on creators, like Instagram creators, like. Cause it's one of my bros, just Shay Frost and like Robbie, that they, they, we're all friends. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Shay, shout out to the Shay. He, why are you doing this? Like, you just they don't they don't they, it's too much work on Instagram. They believe okay. for little of nothing uh -huh. because they see it differently. But like, if you're a creator, you're a creator. A lot of the Instagrammers look at the YouTubers like, oh, they're little douchebags who do nothing <laughs> and have no creativity. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's like night and day, like, and they battle each other. And then it's like clicks, like, oh, this is a YouTube click, Instagram click. Oh, we don't click together. Like, it's wow. so weird. Like, you'll see this shit. Like, <laughs> and go to LA, you'll notice it. But they all still friends, but yeah. it's like this is like nah. It's we like have the YouTube iPhone, crew. Android type stuff. Exactly. So it's like it's, it's it's night and day. But YouTube will. I've seen it, bro. Instagram has changed lives, but I've seen a lot of the creators get on YouTube, and I mean they're making twenty, thirty thousand a month. Like mm -hmm. I watched the Shay. Like I saw all this do this, but I watched the Shay. Like literally, go for nothing to jump on, buying a new G wagon. Yeah. Moving his family from one part of LA to a, the best part of LA, and we're all a part of this because we like we're seeing this. And I'm yeah. like, bro, I'm so proud of you. Just out of nowhere, just start to blow up. Even a lot of the, I'm running um, a lot of the the two girls, famous Ocean and Kung Fu, the two sisters, like they have literally they did nothing. They went to they had like almost 300,000 subscribers on um, YouTube, and they didn't even create. But they just started to create these dope videos and like one hit, we did a prank and actually this scar <laughs> last week came from a, a prank. She did like this prank on her boyfriend. Uh -huh. He got really mad and he was like, oh, and he's like, I tried to get him down and this happened. But that video is about to hit a million. Oh, that sounds crazy. Yeah, about to hit a million <laughs> views. It's at 600, it's maybe 700K now in yeah. like a few days. And that one video has made, is making like thousands of dollars. And I'm like, y'all, Yo, you see if you create, create and keep, keep pumping it. She pumped the next video. It went like 100,000 in like two hours. Yeah, like yeah. views and like, I keep pumping, y'all keep pumping, keep pumping because that's money inside. Like, y'all have these goals. Y'all want to buy G-Wagons. Y'all want to move your family here. Y'all want to live in these condos. It's so easy to do because YouTube can become like that residual base of your life where you know right. you're going to get 5,000 to 10,000 a month. And then you can go just and create, of yeah, videos. just off that video and doing those videos that's going to make you go viral, that already going viral just to copy. You know, it's so easy to do. You mm -hmm. sit here and put a ring light up and do uh, uh, whatever it is and just pranks, challenges, vlogs, because people want to, their fans can see another perspective of their life. Mm -hmm. They see the inside. They really want to watch that. You know, yeah. and that's why uh, YouTube is, it's hard though. It doesn't convert. Don't think you're going to go on Instagram and then blow up your YouTube. No, it's a whole nother different uh, algorithm. It's a whole nother different way of doing things. And once you figure it out, you could master, you could really do some big things with, with YouTube. But I mean, then you still have the sponsorship opportunities and all that stuff. Exactly. Like, yep. Because they yeah. just did one for the first time, the famous Ocean Kung Fu. And they had to do like something called Lash Bay with these lashes and they wanted like this 30 second, 10 second clip in the front. And it was like, how do you, I was like, well, it goes in the front as like, and it was like, how do I say it? How do I do it? So they, I mean, they got paid a couple of thousand to do that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that, to, uh, there's a lot of artists, right? That have a perspective against doing what your influencers are actually doing, right? There's this conversation where a lot of artists feel like you can't translate over from an influencer to an artist. 
it's not true. I don't understand how they still get themselves to believe that the proof is in the pudding. But yeah. but what do you? I don't know. What do you say to a statement like that? <laughs> well, it's not true. Like I know for a fact because a lot of the because you could take in like you would notice like a lot of the influencers who were artists. They blow it like Lil Nas X technically was an influencer. Technically, like, yeah. Troll. That's why he does the things he does because yeah. that's who he is. Yeah. You know, and you master and you um, put things out on certain platforms, it's going to blow up. And they're really, they're talented. There's no, I mean, even if you are not talented, you can get a writer and you can go into the development phase and get a dope beat and it, it can go. Right. You, you know, know, it's just because anything can be created nowadays. Mm. But, um, and then a lot of them were really passionate about music. So if you're passionate about it, there's nothing you can, they can do it, you know? And they got some good stuff in the streams and they're, I mean, I have uh, an influencer that I, I work with, Lovato. Like he was way in the freaking Philippines doing, he was on a YouTube stage, sponsored event in, a, in Asia. Wow. Like from a song, like it's crazy. Got verified and blowing up as an artist and with no label, none of that. <laughs> Just management. <laughs> See, and do you think, so obviously he's moving. A lot of people might not know him, right? But do you think that maybe that might kill a lot of artists before they even get started by trying to seek that type of popularity and pr approval that you don't really have to have? Like, oh, this artist, like the guy you're talking about, Vado, he's killing it in what he's doing. And, he, he, and there's more growth to happen. But another artist might say, oh, well, this isn't Lil Baby, right? And I'm trying to be Lil Baby. And I hear and I want to have this this traditional type of record label proper popularity that I've seen growing up. You know what I mean? Well, the world is so big. And if you leave that concept alone, you'll make, you'll do well. You look at artists like Russ. Like, a lot of people don't even know who he is. But he has... <laughs> stadiums that are packed out yeah. and he's making yeah. money and without being like this mainstream name he has a mainstream name but it's like mainstream in certain niches like it's weird, weird. I never yeah. knew who he was like it's <laughs> yeah. weird because yeah. the world is so big like mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists who probably like where they come from they have a million followers and they do a show and people show up like your fan base as long as you focus on catering to your fan base and everything else will take off and it's good to be like that little baby name or like like that um, uh, whatever the big names are. It's good to be that, but you know, sometimes if you set your own goal and you set you get what you want, like you may just your goal may just to perform in front of thirty thousand and make you know enough money to to live like a superstar. And you happy in that? Then do that. Some I don't, I don't think some people want to be like like super superstars, but if you talent it. You really, well, at some point, it's going to come to that point. Mm. You know, yeah. your talent, talent will, will really, really take, take you to, to the, the next level. level. Yeah, I think that's important. I mean, this whole idea that people are still in prison by their own, like, local geography. We're in a world <laughs> where you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Right? And if you have the talent, like you said, you can, you can find your fan base and now even monetize it without even going in overseas if, if you don't really want to but of course then going overseas get touring checks or yep. whatever kind of show you can do if you're just an influencer but that's it's, it's interesting that people are still confined to those ideas where it's like the the door is open and you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean but you look in the other direction yeah yeah okay um I, I, my last like question that I would like to get to with you is like brand what does that word mean to you and how do you protect it? Okay. So brand is super important. So it's, it's, like, it's like a speaker spotlight that amplifies the perception of what you're doing. Hmm. Not necessarily so a product, but like how it's perceived overall to people. Uh, and it's also like a culture in a way, okay. like the experience. Gotcha. So the brand is like a cultural yeah. experience that is like a speaker that's speaking, that's amplifying everything about you or what you're doing or what you have to offer mm. with the spotlight on it. Got you. <laughs> Got you. Okay, that, that spotlight part is important, yes. right? Because you're kind of choosing that amplification area versus the other aspects of you as well. You know what I mean? Right. So I want to put this side of myself out there. Right. Just like Apple, in a way. 
Apple brand is not the iPhone or the iPod. It's the brand is the coolness of the product. Mm -hmm. The uh, way it's perceived like, oh, I'm going to get into Apple because this is the best for creating this. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond the product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's very, it's very real. Yeah. <laughs> Even the boxing, oh, this phone looks cool. Or yeah. the camera, like it's goes beyond just what it is. Right, they changed the game yeah. with those. Like, you just you open something and it just feels right. different. Yeah. Okay. With with that being said, how do you protect a brand? Well, you protect your brand by knowing, well, first, doing what's right. Okay. <laughs> and serving the way you should serve and providing a, uh, like a product or service to people the right way. If right. things happen, handle it. Because all brands go through a phase where there's bad press, but you just handle it, respond, you know, or mm -hmm. fix. A lot of people take like different reviews and different things that they're saying that's wrong, uh, offensive. No, it helps you to become a greater, greater product, a greater brand, a greater person. So like, I mean, you, Protect that by responding the right way and then adjusting and also being putting yourself in a position to where you could stay relevant because a lot of these brands like go obsolete because they don't adjust to what's going on. Just like Blockbuster and Netflix. Right. You know, yeah. so <laughs> you, you have to be ahead of the curve. You have to understand, keep watching and keep studying what's right. happening in the world and shift what your brand to roll with the flow gotcha. that makes sense appreciate that man well hey everybody it's keith dorsey once again really dope social media influencer manager but obviously an artist manager now and i think he's gonna be somebody that is just gonna be one to watch over the years and obviously the people connected with him because he's, he's already killing it um already what your ig is Young CEO, Young, Young Guns, Guns. CEO. Young Guns CEO. Yeah. I know I was gonna forget a part of it, so I'm gonna put all that, you know, on, on the bottom of the screen. Make sure y'all follow him, reach out to him. I hope they don't flood you too hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> look, it's all look. Just do what you need. I can handle it. <laughs> I can handle it. But this is the first uh, of a series, brand or die again, where we talk to meaningful in, in individuals who've been a part of building. I'm a great brand or have great insights on branding themselves. Thank you once again. Appreciate it. Everybody so stay tuned.